Hello, and welcome to a new screencast about Glassfish, the open source application server. Uh, this uh, webcast is about Java EE6 running on Java 7 and with Glassfish 3.1.1, which supports Java 7. Uh, we have a small web application here with a um, servlet, a 3.0 servlet, uh, that we'll be using in EGB, which we'll see in a moment and which parses a parameter called name, which it gets as part of the request, and uh, looks for Duke or Sparky as the names, and considers both of them as VIPs and uppercases Duke, uh, so we can visually recognize him. And then it does a small uh, set of printouts here, uh, with an exclamation mark for uh, any VIP that we may come across. Uh, and then it talks to uh, an EJB, returns the fact uh, whether it's an existing customer or not, and prints out some details, as well as the result of a system property called Java Runtime Version. And we'll see uh, how we can run on Java 6 as well as on Java 7. Now that does customer exist method is part of an EJB, a stateless session bean, which is packaged as part of the WAR file you see here and which also comes with a data source definition, which is a new way in Java E6 to define a connection to a database with uh, a name, which you can then later uh, inject using an add resource annotation and this lookup attribute. Um, and we actually also have in that EJB a ping DB database um, method, which is called once the component is instantiated. Um, so we actually test the connection at that point. Uh, we get a connection, create a statement, this is standard um, JDBC using the data source we've injected before. And we print out uh, some of the things. And we obviously need to close both the statement and the connection. And we'll see how that can be improved in Java 7. We also inject an entity manager, this is standard JPA. And in that case, uh, we, in that does customer exist method, uh, invoke a query called find all customers with name. That query is actually defined on the customer entity. This is a JPA entity, uh, which has this name query defined. And it uses JPQL as a query language here to get all the customers where name is whichever parameter you'll pass. And speaking of parameter, we set that parameter to the name we've been passed. Uh, we use a lock mode, which is pessimistic write here, um, and this is mainly for demo purposes. There are different lock modes, some of which were introduced in JPA 2.0. And we get the result, um, the list of result. If that list is empty, well, clearly there is no such uh, customer. So we go ahead and create one, set its name, and persist to the database. Otherwise, uh, we return true because we actually found something. And in the process of doing all of this, we can actually catch a number of exceptions, which are both uh, persistent exceptions, but specialized with uh, locking. And in that case, we just print out something and we have the same printout in both cases. Now, uh, let's run actually this application. We're actually running on Java 6, as you'll see in a moment. Uh, this will actually compile everything and deploy to Glassfish 3.1.1. And um, this is the URL which passes the Sparky name in this case. And you see I've always, always already been playing with the um, application. Sparky is already a customer. Sparky 1, though, is not and was just added as a new customer. Uh, we can also try to see if Duke is indeed recognized. And it's a new customer, but it is recognized as both a VIP and as Duke. And as you see here, it's uppercased. And you know, one more try, we can see if Alexi exists. And Alexi is added as a new customer. And as you can see, all of this is done with the latest JDK 1.6 version. So let's now go back uh, to the IDE. This is NetBeans 7.0.1. And undeploy the application uh, for one. And the second thing we'll do is actually also shut down Glassfish itself. Uh, we'll actually upgrade everybody to JDK 7. That's the runtime, Glassfish. We'll do that in a moment. As well as the application itself we're, we're de uh, developing in NetBeans. 
So, um, going to the project properties of this web application project. And the libraries, the platform is set to JDK 6, and that's the only choice we have here. So we can uh, bring the platform manager and navigate to an install of the um, recently released JDK 7. Uh, define this and actually select this as being uh, the platform we want to use. And we also need in the source to make sure the format of the source is recognized as being JDK 7, which is a new option we now have. We'll come back to the code and what we can do in a moment. Uh, but before we do that, we actually need to update, update Glassfish as well. So one way to do it, or multiple ways, and I'll show you a second way in a moment, is to actually go ahead and edit a configuration file at Glassfish. Um, so this is the JDK version we want to be using. And we'll edit a file called asenv.conf in the config directory. And we'll add one um, variable here, uh, which is called as underscore Java, and simply point to the um, equivalent of Java home. In my case, this is um, my home directory, JDK 1.7.0. So with that, we'll actually uh, go back to the IDE, uh, go to the services tab, and restart Glassfish. So while Glassfish is starting, it should really only take a few seconds, we can actually go and uh, look at the um, admin console of Glassfish that it has started. Uh, and we can see uh, in the JVM report that we are indeed using JDK 1.7.0, so Java 7. And we can probably uh, look for the appropriate uh, environment variables uh, or properties here. Yes, there you go, 1.7.0. Now, um, going back to um, the IDE, um, I also want to point out another way you can change the runtime for Glassfish. In this uh, Java tab, you can actually point to an executable for Java. So that would be jdk17.0 slash bin slash Java. But that will only uh, affect Glassfish when ran uh, from within NetBeans. So now the interesting cool part, let's use Project Coin, uh, and specifically one of the new language features, which supports strings in switch statements. So here you see NetBeans has actually offered you to switch to the switch syntax. So now we have a switch on a string, and we have various cases for dealing with Duke, Sparky, both are VAPs, and a default one. Uh, there are two more things that I'd like to show you that relate to Java 7, specifically Project Coin. One has to do with the fact you can use try with resources now, which is an ability for the developer to uh, initialize, initialize variables and not having to deal about how uh, they are closed. So here, the connection is being initiated as part of the try statement. And that is possible because it actually, as part of JDBC 4.1, implements the auto-closable interface, which itself is part of Java 7. So uh, the compiler will actually do the right thing for you and close those resources when they go out of scope. And you can similarly, because statement also implements that variable, uh, use the quick tip from NetBeans to apply the try uh, with resources syntax, which will this time initiate initialize two variables and you no longer have to close them. Uh, now, finally, the last one I'd like to show, uh, we'll scroll down a little bit here, is um, the so-called multi-catch feature. Uh, if you remember, uh, I was doing this pessimistic write um, search, and there are two exceptions that I'm catching here. And both of them um, extend persistence exception. So pessimistic lock exception and lock timeout exception. So, and since we're doing exactly the same thing in those catch blocks, we can actually use here the multi-catch syntax, which will, in the same catch, declare two exceptions and have just one catch block. So um, with that, we can actually see that everything still works. This is a mirrored 
uh, just refactoring. So run the application and um, this time we're running obviously Glassfish on JDK 7 and there you go, voila. Uh, welcome Sparky, a new customer, that's a new deployment. Uh, you can try uh, the other ones and specifically Duke. And Duke is now running on JDK 7 on Java 7 on Glassfish 3.1.1. Thanks for watching this screencast. You can get your glassfish at glassfish.org and send some feedback as you have it. Thank you.